on guys, I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and I'm here with AT&T's fourth Android device, the Dell Aero. It comes after the Backflip, the Aria, the Captivate, and then this bad boy. It's a mid-range Android device on AT&T. It's not quite available on AT&T's website yet, but you can get it from Dell for $99.99 with a new two-year agreement, or $299 if you want to buy it straight out. So it's another mid-range device, and the question that people have in the Android community that are on AT&T is, When's the carrier going to release another high-end device? You know, we have the Captivate. It's got a 1 gigahertz processor, 5 megapixel camera. It's part of the Galaxy S line. You know, it's a nice device, and it's, it's high-end. But you still can't sideload apps from non-Android market sources. So the software is closed, and it's, you know, one of four devices. The other three are which are, you know, very much in the, in the mid-range area. Aria is a nice device, mid-range. Backflip, a lot of people didn't like it. You know, the, the form factor didn't quite take off. And now the Arrow. So... A lot of mid-range devices are in that 99 to 149, 99 range. So the question is, when are they going to release another high-end device? But back to the Arrow, it runs with Android 1.5, a 5-megapixel camera. And, you know, the funny thing is, Dell says Android 1.5, the customizations they've done to it are so great that people probably won't need Android 2.2. Or, or, let me rephrase that. They won't notice that it's not Android 2.2 or 2.1. So, you know, the question is, the software has dramatically changed. You know, a lot of people have said it's more like a feature phone or, you know, like a basic smartphone versus a true Android device. Is that the case? We're going to find out. The Dell Aero unboxing Android device on AT&T unboxing starts right now. All right, so here's the Dell Aero with AT&T. It's Dell's, well, if you count the streak, it's Dell's second smartphone. I kind of count the streak as more of a tablet, but, you know, second smartphone um, available now through Dell, as I said, for $99.99 with a new two-year agreement, or $299 if you want to buy it straight out, you know, plus taxes and all that good stuff. So here's the box. It's kind of an interesting shaped box. You look at this versus like, you know, typical, like, let's look at the Droid Incredible box. You know, very typical. A little bit of a unique design. Dell Aero, Android platform, personal and corporate email capable, full HTML browser, 5 megapixel camera with 8x zoom. Please don't text and drive AT&T, your world. No, that's not their motto anymore. Rethink possible is their motto. Uh, Dell Aero, have a look at the side. Package contents, Dell device, battery, stereo headset, Mini USB cable, travel charger, 3.5 millimeter to mini USB adapter, removable 2 gigabyte SD card, SIM card, and quick start guide. So let's have a look here. Oh, well, that's nice of them. Thank you for purchasing a Dell Aero. You're welcome, AT&T. Quick start guide, manuals, all that good stuff. Texting and driving, it can wait. That's very wise advice. So here's the device. Um, and first hands on, you know, I haven't played with this. Um, since I got it. So my first hands on it, it's a little bit plasticky feeling and you can hear the buttons shake a little bit. But that's just a first. Hands on battery door. Battery. Let's see how big it is. 1000 milliamps. Uh, that's a little small for an Android device, but we'll see how it performs in the review. So we have that. We have a little box. That's all that comes in that box. And in this box you get, whoops, fell out, AC adapter module, USB cable which connects to the AC adapter module to make a charger, it doubles as a USB cable. Now if I remember right, the arrow is mini USB, not micro USB, so it could be a frustration for some. Yep, mini USB, not micro USB. Let's keep that in mind. And a stereo headset. Which is nice. Um, interestingly enough, you know, it doesn't have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. It has yeah, everything plugs into the mini USB port, which is kind of frustrating if you think about it. I mean, this is supposed to be even a mid-range smartphone. All of them should have 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks. That's just unacceptable to me in 2010, but I digress. Ear tips. Actually, the stock headset's a very nice one. Um, nice earbuds that go in the ear. Nice earbuds that go in the ear, as opposed to earbuds that go in the nose. Another mini USB connector, so again, you know, there's no, on the device, there's no 3.5 millimeter jack, so everything connects through mini USB. And to that end, here's a mini USB to 3.5 millimeter adapter. So again, you know, it's nice of them to include the adapter, but it's still a little frustrating to me that, you know, mid-range, even a mid-range smartphone that doesn't have 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, that's a little, a little funky in my opinion. Important information. Warranty and support information, safety, environmental, and regulatory information, and AT&T Navigator. Hey, you get the first 30 days free. That's kind of cool. 
put that back and let's power this sucker on. I actually have a SIM card over here. Let's throw that in so we can get an idea. From the back here, while I have the battery door off, micro SD card, two gigabytes installed, SIM card slot, five megapixel camera on the back with a flash. Let me stick this sucker in and we will be in business. In business. Okay. And the battery door goes there. Or battery goes there rather than battery door goes there. Pull that off. And hey. And it's powering up now. So I don't know if you can hear it through the camera, but those buttons, uh, the plastic buttons on the side are a little wobbly, so when you shake the device, you can, I mean, not that I'm going to walk around shaking my device, but you can hear that, so a little bit of a, you know, initial build quality question there, but it's pla uh, very plasticky, nothing on the bottom other than the at and logo. Wow, whoosh, whoosh, 3G, anyway. Um, earpiece on top, obviously. On the right side, camera shortcut button. Another shortcut button we'll find out about in a minute. Volume rocker on the left side. Power button. Another shortcut button we'll find out about. Mini USB port covered by a little piece of plastic. And then from the side, you can see it. It's kind of a unique design to it. Kind of an aerodynamic design. Very glossy. You can see it's already attracting fingerprints. So the whole thing's pretty glossy. So here's the menu. Let's have a look at this. A slide to unlock. You can see weather on the front automatically. It looks nothing like Android 1.5. Very, very unique in that regard. So we'll start by looking at the menu. No notifications, no text messaging, or no text messages, rather, anything like that. But the menu is accessed by sliding from left to right, so far as I can tell. You can see the icons there, there, there. Interestingly enough, it doesn't look like there's a Gmail icon. Um, there are these four shortcut icons up top, phone, browser, messaging, and email, but I'm not seeing a Gmail specific application. But there are a couple, you know, unique things, um, AT&T Music, AT&T Video Course, AT&T Navigator, AT&T Maps, pictures, music, you know, different icons there, video editor, voice control, notes, you can see a couple of Dell pre-installed things, uh, Facebook and Twitter, mobile banking, AT&T, YP Mobile, GPS, AT&T Hotspots. So pretty pretty loaded with AT&T uh, bloatware, if you will. But up top, there's four shortcuts. Phone, browser, messaging, email. So let's start with phone. Just get a quick look. There's your dial pad. Contacts, call log, and favorites. They're in the top. And then from what I can gather, you know, there, there's no actual back button on the phone, which is frustrating. So, you know, you have to use this each time you want to back up. So you you know redial or so you know depending on what menu you're in a specialized button pops up there but over here's the menu speed dial setting show number and high number in the case of the contacts or I mean in the case of the dialer rather so it's a little frustrating that there's no back button or any any sort of capacitive buttons on the bottom it's all menu based so you can imagine that would be frustrating over time but there's the browser we'll look at that in a minute messaging and see how that button changed from redial to new message. And then here's a menu. If you can see, I mean, even the settings, it's just a dramatically different. It doesn't look anything like Android 1.5. So it is heavily customized. The question is, you know, sure, this may appeal to first-time smartphone buyers. Is this something that existing Android users have any interest in whatsoever? Or are they targeting it mostly towards first-time smartphone buyers and people coming from other platforms? So go back here. Just give me a quick look. Browser. So we're going to jump in here. It actually feels, out of all the smartphones I've ever reviewed, it feels the least like a smartphone. It seems, it's more like a high-end, like, feature phone or something of that nature. Like a high-end touchscreen feature phone is what it seems like. So you can see we're on Yahoo, AT&T, version of Yahoo. So much more coverage to come on the Dell Arrow with AT&T as we start to hash out these hardware and software differences that make this device unique. We'll have first impressions, written and video reviews. All kinds of good stuff. In the meantime, be sure to like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash phone dog. Head over to our page. Check out some exclusive content that you won't see on the main site. And, of course, be sure to follow me on Twitter, phone dog underscore Aaron. I'll be happy to answer any questions, comments, ideas, anything that you have. I'll do my best to answer those as quickly as I can. Thanks for watching. I'm Aaron. Have a great day.